Welcome to Good Intentions with Tim Ray. I am Tim Ray, and I'm also the founder of United Intentions Foundation at unitedintentions.org. And today we have an incredible story of a lady, a young lady here, Sandy, <laughs> Sandy Hatfield. She is uh, actually channels angels, has channeled angels in the past, and actually helped her create a book. This book here is called Zero Degrees of Separation. And I love the name, Zero Degrees of Separation. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you a little bit about her first before we get into her story. Uh, Sandra Hatfield is the national trainer, we call you Sandy, national trainer director of the Twilight Brigade, Compassion in Action, a national training organization teaching people how to be present as well as volunteer for terminally ill uh, and also their families as well. Um, and she I have to say, you probably, I, to me, what I think you're well known for, not outside of just the Twilight Brigade, but you actually spoke to an angel. Yes, I have. And, and here you are telling people, uh, millions of people, at what the story's about. And I tell you, I can't wait to see because I do believe in angels, and I know a lot of people uh, do. Probably, I'd say probably most people believe in angels. Now, if you set them down and said, have you spoke to angels, probably most people say, no, I have not. <laughs> so you're going to have to really tell us exactly what this experience is like. But I understand channeling. I understand mm -hmm. that aspect of it. Uh, I think people, everyone has, a, has an opportunity to channel if they, if they get focused and, and in tune to the higher frequencies, right? But Tell us about your experience. How, when did you realize that you were just not here alone and there was other people around you? Well, it, it, it was kind of a strange thing. I had a real good friend of mine. I had been uh, out of work, and a friend of mine asked me if I would please, maybe we could find a work job to do together. And when she came over to the house for us to talk about it, she handed me a book, and it was Ask Your Angels. She said, here, my mother gave me this book, uh, but I haven't had a chance to read it. I don't know what it's about, but..." You read it and tell me what it's about. So the funny thing was, I had never really believed in angels. I didn't even know if I believed in angels or not until I read that book. And yes, I, I definitely realized, well, there's a lot more to this than I ever gave it credit for. So I, I did that and I told her, I know what I want to do. I, I want to maybe have some kind of a class about your angels. So I started meditating and working, and then I started all of a sudden getting these messages. And uh, it was like he was just sitting on my shoulder and, and not really talking in my ear, but that's where I felt his presence. And I started getting all kinds of information from him, and he was the one that told me it was time that I wrote a book. And so, hold on now, so mm -hmm. you, so you, heard, you felt this, this energy, let's mm -hmm. say, on your shoulder, and when you heard it or when you understood what was being said, it was more of like an intuitive knowing it flowed out of you? Or do you actually hear voices? Or how, do you, how would you describe that? You hear it, and at first you think it's your own mind talking to you. Okay. And it, it's kind of in that vein. It's very subtle. But, uh, yeah, but then you realize, oh, no, I would never have said that, or I wouldn't have <laughs> thought that. It, it, it just was kind of a surprise. So I, I, before we started anything, I just started listening to him. I would ask questions, and I'd start writing down the answers. And I didn't realize, believe it or not, and this has been years ago, I didn't believe it until I pulled out my book on angels. I started an angel class, and I brought my book, and in the back of it, there's a stack of messages that I had gotten from him. And it was just loaded with information, I thought, for heaven's sake. So I've only channeled two people, my angel and my brother. Wow. But outside of that, the angel was plenty, believe me. He has given me so much information. So as a result, he was the one I said, he said, I needed to teach the world and I needed to do this and he's the one that asked me to write this book. And Zero Degrees of Separation, because you title that, because why? Well, what is the one where everyone says that uh, you're seven degrees of separation yeah, and yeah. from From whatever. that famous actor, yeah, I can't remember his name. Kevin, yes. And, and, and well, I thought, well, that's not right. Um, and I was trying to come across a name, and believe it or not, my angel had just popped in my head, and I thought, okay, I know where that answer came from. He was that came up with the zero. I always say we're, 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 we're an intention away from connecting with God. God is all there is, you know. Mm -hmm. But you grew up in a kind of a unique family, didn't you, Sam? Oh, I did. Yeah, it was very a, metaphysical family. Yeah, it wasn't a typical Christian or a typical Jewish family. It was just a, a very metaphysical family. Yeah, it was an everything. Family. Our father and mother were, were right. more. Well, right. that's just unusual uh, growing up, and, and you know, uh, I'm not going to date you at all, but that's unusual back in the time when, oh, you, yeah. yeah, you it know. It definitely was. I right. mean, it was my first few years of life, I was a vegetarian because that's <laughs> the way they do. I am not any longer, I'm sorry to say. But uh, yes, and I, I, 
I was raised in that philosophy, and that's the way it was. Uh, right. It was, uh, mother would jokingly say, we tried to brainwash you the best we could. So that was, that was it. Well, it seems like interesting. When we get back from break, I want to continue, if you don't mind, the angel story and get to some of the specific parts of the book that your angel, you, you knew that your angel was saying for you to say that you would probably either disagree or you didn't like really know what that meant. Maybe later on you kind of discovered it, re rereading it, you know, what really he could have been saying and uh, how more important it is now that you do know. So let's get back to it and we'll, we'll okay. talk about that. Right. We're right back with Sandy Hatfield talking about uh, angels and channeling angels and what does that mean and, and if you can do that too. We'll be right back. What if you could have whatever you desired with a simple thought? Wishful thinking? Science has proven that thoughts can change our reality. Join the movement and be part of an interactive virtual community that helps you take control of your life through the power of intentions. Hi, my name is Tim Ray. I'm the founder of the United Intentions Foundation at unitedintentions.org. Everything is energy, and that's all there's to it. Match the frequency of the reality that you want, and you cannot help but get that reality. There can be no other way. And this is not philosophy, this is physics. Now. I just gave you a quote from, not me, but from Albert Einstein. He said a long, long time ago. So what does he mean by matching your frequency of the reality you want to experience? First you have to realize that not only as humans, but everything is made up of energy. And at an atomic level, everything's vibrating at certain frequencies. Even on a collective level, we're vibrating at a certain frequency. This is very important to know. Once you understand that, you're closer to understanding what Einstein meant by matching our reality and matching the frequency, you'll have that experience. Stay with me here, because our thoughts, feelings, and emotions vibrate at specific and unique frequencies. There's a physical phenomenon going on and with our thoughts and feelings, and we have to realize that whatever state of being that we create through our thoughts, feelings, and emotions, we will attract that experience. That's the law of attraction. So it behooves us to choose our thoughts carefully, at least be aware of our state of being, because that's the experience we will have. Learn more at UnitedIntentions.org and begin manifesting your passions one intention at a time. Welcome back with Two Good Intentions with Tim Ray and we are talking to Sandy Hatfield uh, from the Twilight Brigade and she was talking about her experience channeling angels and actually helped write a book. Now this is not the first person I interviewed actually were, would say and told everybody that they channeled the book together with mm -hmm. somebody who's passed. I had one person right. came on and channeled the book with their, their son who passed away. Mm -hmm. And so uh, once you kind of understand, you go through this type of uh, un hearing this and perhaps not just listening to the mainstream media, you're actually talking to people with real life experiences and, and, and understanding that, that it's not so far-fetched to believe. Uh, but at the same time, when you, people say, I channeled a book with an angel, it's pretty remarkable and I, I would say almost the first instincts people say, well, why are you so special? Why don't I channel my books with angels? Do you think you know, you're very unique in that situation or you think no. other people know? No, no, I think anybody can do it. It's a matter of, uh, by golly, setting your intention. Uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, it, there, th I decided this is something I wanted to do and when he started giving me information, I started writing and he was the one that told me to start writing every day. And even if it's just a small amount, you write every day. Uh, I kind of let that go uh, a couple of times because the uh, creative juices weren't flowing, so to speak. <laughs> so I'd tell myself, I'll just put this off until another day. And uh, one of the things that we look for are what we call angel tracks, which is things, messages they'll leave you without you realizing it. And I was standing at my kitchen window when I was telling myself I'd do it tomorrow and a hummingbird came up to my window and was looking at me directly and I thought, oh, is that my angel telling me this? So this happened three different times until I got the message. And so I thought, and there is no hummingbird feeder in our front window, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> and I haven't seen them since it, right at that location. So anyway, I, I, uh, he started to actually take me on a trip of the other side. Because I thought, how am I going to do this? So I had decided the best way to get the message across for people not to fear death anymore was to write a book about death and the other side. And with his guidance and his help, he literally took me on a trip of the other side. So I would write for a while and I would go wow. with him. And it was just, it was uh, amazing to me. And Well, do tell, we want to know what it's like on the other side while we're on this side. 
Well, I, I, I wrote it as a novel because I didn't want anyone to think that I was trying to say, okay, this is the way it is. I wrote it as a novel so that I could open the door to more possibilities for people that think, oh, dying is dying, you're dead, you're done. Um, and there is so much more to it. And uh, there, uh, he showed me how you, with thought, the, the, the character of the book was able to completely clothe herself in whatever was her most comfortable outfit, and she was able to, to, to change whatever she thought she was going to change. And he showed me as an example of her creating her, her so-called living space on the other side. Hmm. And so she created whatever was comfortable for her. Just like just the thought and then creation that, that just unfolds and appears in, in, in front of you. That's exactly right. It's just that immediate manifestation. Yeah. Wow, that's fascinating. Did you, um, did you, did you experience at all? Were there some people who have these near-death experiences say that there's panorama, panorama life review where everything they've done up to then, was that anything that they mentioned yeah, that at that all? Yeah, he explained what that was all about. And um, he, he also said that this is something that everybody will go through. And he cautioned that, that it's not anything to be afraid of. Well, tell us what that is. He said, when, when, you're, when you go to the other side, you will automatically, it, it's like a, a report card in a way. Here is what your <laughs> life was, and these are uh -oh, the things that happened. I won't be going anywhere soon. <laughs> but he said, there's, it, you won't necessarily, you will see things where you have done things that were not quite pleasant maybe to other people. You may have told a fib, or you may have hurt somebody, even if it was unintentionally. You will relive that moment, but you will relive it from the person's side not yourself, you will live it from the person that you so-called did something against. He said, and it's not to be feared because you don't feel the pain. And if you slug somebody, you're not going to feel that pain, but you will feel the experience, the emotional experience, and the hurt that that person felt at the time. Well, so you feel that actual emotional pain and suffering, the other vic person, the victim of your, your, your bad decisions right. or whatever, you feel their situation. Right. So if, you, if their parents die because of your action, you feel what it's like to lose a parent. Yes. Wow. Exactly. Wow. So, and then the other thing that I found was really, really, uh, that the thoughts were in instant. The, you can transport yourself from one place to another. You can come back and visit your loved ones just by thinking about it. Um, and there's, there's another part that I will go into, maybe perhaps uh, a, little, a little later. But he, he also, on, on these trips, I got to see the, the uh, animals. And I thought, well, what about animals? Well, animals come to you immediately because they're the ones that are also going to be waiting for you when you go through the tunnel oh, of light that I they cannot call. wait. Are you serious? <laughs> yes, I am serious. Um, I and can you, wait. I'm just, you, just well, saying, you, figuring yeah, speech. You, you call them to you, yeah. um, and they're there. And the other thing was the traveling of the levels. There are different levels of heaven, depending on what, what you have, what reward or some, whatever you want to call it, you have reaped. There is no hell. There is just, he, no, there is there's no, no hell. hell. But there is a lower level right. that you will have to get through, and you will have to uh, experience that, that kind of living. And when you get really tired of it and you really want to listen to your angels over there because they're with you all the time uh, from the moment you're born here until you leave and they never leave you so it, it it's just a, a not just a lifetime thing but an eternity thing wow. a lot of well a lot of people here in the western culture believes you know they've been taught to believe there's a hell and some mm -hmm. you know but wouldn't it be also if you are able to manifest hand over foot immediately whatever if you're in a front of kind of a fear vibration going into your into this other world, could you not manifest a hell for yourself? Or oh no? yes, certainly. So maybe there is a hell. Maybe it is there is a it's hell. A different type than what they're expecting because right. there is no burning hell. That All is right. just that is not going to happen. But in a way, it would be a hell because they have to. It, it would yeah. be a much denser climate than what you know. As you're elevated, the light starts coming in, and so it's it's not so much light. Kind of a small but, hell just to learn your lesson quicker. Exactly. And, that's <laughs> and there's, always, there's always angels there that are there for that purpose to help you work through this. And if they, whoever is there and refuses, then that is their loss, not yours. Wow. So they, they will help them work through that until they can move up level after level. So when I was visiting these different levels, I can't go higher than what I've already earned. I could only go below to see the levels he was say, showing me. When you say earned, what, how, what do you mean by that? How much love you carry around within you? You is that love fake? Is it forced or is it real? And that that the whole thing is based on love. There's nothing greater than that ever. So, 
this is what you, you earn the right to be where you are. And we're all exactly where we're supposed to be right now anyway. So I, mean, I can't remember the name of the movie. They said the love that you hold back here on Earth is the pain you take with you when in the, in the afterworld. But uh, I don't know if it's the pain you take with you, but it's the love that we hold back is perhaps you haven't earned the certain you level have, when you get yeah, there, You'll right? have to work your way through that. Wow. You're not going to stop learning because you're here. You're not, when, you're do I, learn when do I just there. go to the beach and have a margarita and just relax? I mean, when does that happen? Well, then you can do that, too. You create that over there. Do that if that's what you want. <laughs> now, that's just fascinating, and it's all in your book, uh, Zero Degrees of Separation, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful book. When we get back from break, Sandy, let's talk a little bit about what you're doing now with the, and have been doing with the Twilight Brigade. Okay. And also the, the uh, man you work with, Daniel Brinkley, right? He's a... Uh, He's a man who knows a lot about death as well. Oh, Seems yes. Like, uh, uh, he's been, I think he died two or three times, right? Well, he wrote the foreword to my book. Oh, did he? Oh, excellent. All right. Uh -huh. we'll, be, we'll be right back with Sandy Hatfield talking about uh, <laughs> death and how we can face it by living. Be right back. What if you could have whatever you desired with a simple thought? Wishful thinking? Science has proven that thoughts can change our reality. Join the movement and be part of an interactive virtual community that helps you take control of your life through the power of intentions. My name is Tim Ray, founder of the United Intentions Foundation at unitedintentions.org. Do you realize that this world is in a crisis? But not a crisis of what you would think when you're watching the evening news, but more so a crisis of perception. And what do I mean by that? That it's how we perceive things is what creates our experience. For example, say that you're about to have a baby and you think this is the most wonderful exciting time in your life. However, your partner thinks it's the worst time of his life. So it's the same experience, right? You're both having a baby, but you have two different beliefs. So remember, and this most importantly, is that from these beliefs, from these perceptions, comes our actions, our choices, and our decisions that affect what and create what we experience next. So think about that for a second. It's not so much that our thoughts just create our reality, but it's our perceptions that create our experience. So, if you want to learn to have a better reality, learn how to change your perceptions. To learn more, go to unitedintentions.org and begin manifesting your passions one intention at a time. Back to Good Intentions with Tim Ray. I'm sitting here with Sandy Hatfield and we are talking about transitioning and there is no death and what it's like to be on the other side. And she wrote this fantastic book called Zero Degrees of Separation, which tells you and shows you from a, and her perspective and her angel's perspective that she channeled of what it's like to be on the other side. It's a fascinating read. It's an excellent book. I strongly recommend that. Um, uh, and, if, and if people want to learn more, Sandy, what, what website can they go to learn more about, about you and this? About that book, I have a, a, a separate email address. It's angelconnection at windstream.net. Okay, angelconnection at windstream.net. Mm -hmm. So let's shift, let's shift the conversation because, I mean, I could talk about death all day long. I love talking about it because mm -hmm. once you embrace that there is no death, you really can start living in this world, right? That's the only time you really start yeah. living. <laughs> But, but speaking of embracing death, I mean, you have been embracing death for decades now, helping yeah. people during their transition in hospice uh -huh. care. The Twilight Brigade, which you started up with, uh, with Daniel Brinkley, who, mm -hmm. a near-death experience, very famous man wrote Saved by the, Saved, um, by the Light, right? Mm -hmm. And you go around all over the country helping mm -hmm. people transition to this place that you just described. Mm -hmm. Wow, I mean, does it? It's like like being a police officer. I mean, you're always around this crime and murder all the time. After a while, you're like, what you like? We had a guest on Susan McDowell. Told what you focus on is what you experience. So, how, does this ever get to you? Or you're no, no, no. This work, and when you get into this field, to me, it is probably the most gratifying thing you will ever ever do. Um, you're doing such a service, and you're helping that person who is perhaps so fearful and frightened and saying, I, I just don't want to do this. And they, they fight it every inch of the way. And if there's any way you can be there to help them through this, that's what we do. And that, that's what we teach people to do in the Twilight Brigade. Um, I like to use my angels for doing this, once again, because <laughs> I, I always have my angel help me work with that individual. And I call on the connecting angel between me and that person and ask that angel to call on his angel and we just work with a whole room full of angels which helps them in their transition and shifting <laughs> over 
So right. yeah, I've been doing it for a lot of years, and I do, I, I love what I do. Are these angels unionized at all, or are they get on the clock? They probably are, but I haven't asked. <laughs> that, that's just fascinating how uh, it, that part, and, and can you sense that when it's happening? or You can feel it. You can yes. feel it. Yeah, you, you, there is a, a, a whole change in atmosphere because it, it's the love that they're bringing with them, and it, it, it keeps you connected to the love you need to help that person. Right. Make their transition. So you're you're experiencing death with people, and you're actually physically holding hands, emotionally connected, and and your your toilet brigade training is phenomenal. I went through it myself, and it's just phenomenal about the compassion in action. It really is uh, approaching death from a whole other perspective, and I strongly recommend people to um, check it out. But it's when you're dealing with with that type of moment, it, I'm sure you go through the motions of sad, depression. Oh, of course you will. I, I don't get depressed, but you do feel you feel sadness because you're not going to be with them anymore. <laughs> and even though they're a, they're a patient, and but you develop a friendship when you're working with these people, and that's what we try to do. They're not just a a person who's dying; they're a living person who happens to be dying, and that's the way I look at it. And that's why I try to teach people that because they need you there, and you will develop beautiful relationships. And that it won't be. I'm not afraid to say I cry. I do cry. I miss them, and I. It's a very touching moment sometimes, and uh, it, it, it's something you just don't forget, and it makes you look forward to helping the next person. <laughs> so, it, so it's re-energizing for you. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. You have to love the work, and when you start it, you can't help but love the work. Mm. Well, one thing, too, you also specialize, uh, not to say specialize, but you focus a lot of your Twilight Brigade uh, working with veterans. Oh, yes, definitely. Why is that so important to you? Well, because they're probably the most forgotten unit of humanity that we have on earth today, which is pretty darn sad. So um, yes. we, we definitely are trying to get more and more people interested in taking the training that are veterans, because a veteran working with a veteran works a lot better than someone who has never experienced anything like that in their life. And uh, we have some veterans that are just absolutely fantastic volunteers, and that's what we're looking for. Um, and it, so it, it it's only natural that we should be focusing on the veterans to maybe expand our work into other areas of working with veterans. Well, good, and, uh, and that's definitely hopefully be coming down the pike because we, we needed more so now than ever before. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the process of with somebody transitioning, is, was there ever a, a time, is certain things that you shouldn't say more so just other than just being there? I mean, so there's certain things you shouldn't, like we recommend what not to do because most people who were first time they haven't experienced whether it's their mother or father or loved one, you know, you're you're just kind of learning as learning through the process, mm -hmm. and a lot of times you may say something that you're not. I and mean, what is the, what are the no, what are the don'ts to dying? <laughs> oh, the very first and most important one is don't ever say, "Oh, I understand." <laughs> 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 it will come back to you so fast from that patient, and they'll say, "Oh, no, you don't understand." Um, there, uh, don't tell the family, "Oh, they're going to a much better place." Um, you know, they're, they're, even if you they're believe that, even if you believe that, you just don't say things like that because they will get angry with you. What's better than living with me? Yeah, yeah. So uh, you just try to stay away from that kind of stuff as much as possible. Right. So it, it's, um, you know, in our, in our, we do a lot of that. We do a lot of role play in our training. We do a lot of uh, dyad work, and the, uh, we try to teach people how to be there for the patient and for the family, and we also want to make sure that uh, we help them to possibly confront any issues that may get in the way of them doing this work. Uh, and then we also try to teach them how do you take care of yourself to avoid burnout while doing this work. And then finally, the most important of all is we focus on heart work as well as just mind work when we're working with clients. How can you have compassion in action if you're not coming from the heart, right? You, and, and the other thing I tell my students too is Whatever you do in love and whatever you take with love into that room, you're never going to do the wrong thing. Mm. Yeah, that's great. And I'll tell you, I think that alone for it should be a course also taught in our education system on how to be there with people in the present and who are transitioning because we avoid a couple things in this world as we grow up. One thing we avoid thinking about is death. Death, right. And wh why should people not avoid thinking about death, in your opinion? We all should, um, and it, 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 
there's no way of really preparing anyone for it. The thing is, nobody's going to escape it. There's not a person in this room that isn't either going to face their own or someone else <coughs> that's very close to them. And it, it's just impossible to say, well, it's not going to happen to me. So anything else, if you're going out and buying a car, you're not going to say, well, I'm not going to think about it. Uh, I like the car I have, and it's fine, so I'm not even going to look at a new car. Uh, it might be the wrong one. Well, it, it just, it's pretty much, it's so basically simple. So it, it's just a matter of uh, preparing yourself for anything and everything, and most of it, as I said, is, is, is a love base. And if you look at it that way, and, and not fear it, that we've, that's where the basis of this all comes from. Working with angels, they teach you don't fear. It, it's the most destructive human emotion that we carry around with us. And you believe if we truly understood our sense of connection to God, God is all there is, source, whatever you want to find it, Jesus, Buddha, whoever that you resonate with, if we realize how powerful we really are, who we really are, and our connection to who we really are, we wouldn't fear, would we? No, you wouldn't. There'd be nothing to fear. <laughs> There's nothing left to fear. Well, maybe life would be a little boring then, because maybe fear, help, help, maybe fear helps us grow. Huh? Oh, I think it would be so darned exciting if we could get everybody to say, this is wonderful. Guess who I talked to last night? I talked to my angel last night. <laughs> well, you know, and real quick, we only have like a minute left. Uh, can you share a little advice how people can talk to their angels? I just Since started, angel expert. It, it, it was very much like, like the, the intention, you set the intention, this is what I want to do. I want to do this, and then you sit down, and after meditating, you just expect it. Just let it go, just let it flow. Things will just start coming to you, and it will flow in there naturally, because they want to talk to you as much as you want to talk to them. Wow, fantastic. Well, you've been listening to a true angel, and sharing, <laughs> sharing, sharing life and death, all, all, in the same, all in the same segment here. I was amazed how people like Sandy really make a difference, and you do you make a difference out there in the world, and every day who you're interacting with at the Twilight Brigade, and uh, the people you meet, and how you're so helpful. You are really, really a blessing. Thank you for Thank coming you, out. Thank you, Tim. Thank all right. you. Thank, Thank you. you all, and remember, you can change your reality by the power of your intentions. Until next time, I'm Tim Ray. We'll see you then.